everyone and welcome to church we're so excited to have you here tonight and we can't wait to get into the amazing service yeah it's gonna be awesome uh, i love sundays love coming together and uh even online it's uh, it's amazing uh just being able to uh get together connect um keep sharing all the uh, love hearts and, and likes and put your comments in as you watch um and uh, let us know the things that uh that, that speak to you throughout the service um, I have a verse I want to share with us. You know, we're about to hear some songs from the incredible worship team in a moment. And, uh, and I want to encourage us through a, a psalm, which is Psalm 100, uh, in preparing our hearts for this time where we come to sing songs. Okay? So this is in Psalm 100. It says, Shout for joy to the Lord all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before Him with joyful songs. Know that the Lord is God. It is He who made us, and we are His. We are His people, the sheep of His pasture. Enter His gates with thanksgiving, and His courts with praise. Give thanks to Him and praise His name. For the Lord is good, and His love endures forever. His faithfulness continues through all generations. Uh, how cool is that? And, and so we have an opportunity to... To come tonight in our living rooms or wherever we are uh, to give thanks and praise to God. Uh, that's what we're going to do now. Uh, so have an awesome night and uh, yeah, we'll talk to you guys soon. See ya. Hello, my name is Candy and my favorite verse is Psalms 29 verse 11. Lord gives us strength to his people. Lord blesses his people with peace and the reason I like this um verse is because Lord is there for us. Bye, thank you.
Jim, um, yeah, and I'm sharing a couple of verses uh, with you. Um, firstly, from Romans 8, um, there is no condemnation to the, to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. Uh, for the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. And uh, a bit further down in verse 6, it's uh, for to be carnally minded is death but to be spiritually minded is life and and peace and uh, yeah I, I suppose um, and and I guess what I'm getting to is that yeah there's a bit of a struggle there um, in that yes you know I'm in Christ Jesus and um, the the thing is of, of walking um, do we walk you know in the flesh or do we walk in, um, in the spirit and uh, for me, it, it's a, you know, it, it is a struggle, and I, I think for most people, um, yeah, we can we can struggle in in that walking after the flesh or walking after the spirit. Uh, so the the verse that um, or the verses that I really like are, are the practical verses that help walking in my walk. And that, that comes in Philippians 4 verse 8. Um, For now, dear brothers and sisters, one final thing. Fix your thoughts on what is true, what is honourable, what is right, pure and lovely and admirable. Think on these things that are excellent and worthy of praise. Um, and I think that, that, that really is an encouragement to me in when you've got that walk and and yes things can get tough um, you know to to almost just come back to those simple things uh, to to give thanks and praise for those simple things um, that are true that are honorable um, that are lovely um, and quite often that is just those small simple things are the is is the trigger to be able to go from thinking on the, the from the carnal things to thinking to the spiritual things um, so yeah that Philippians 4 verse 8 um, is my favorite verse for that because it just helps me just click back into um, a spiritual mind uh, for God hey guys I'm so glad that you can join us tonight and be a part of our service I just really want to share with you what God has placed on my heart for this season. Well, we're in term three, and I don't know about you guys, but it feels like we're starting off a brand new year. With all the stuff that's going on with COVID, we're learning to do new things, like keep our 1.5 metres and when you go into shops and, you know, 
some places they're starting to wear masks and things like that and it's all a little bit strange and I know though with all that going on and swelling on around in our world God is wanting us to come into a new season and like Shaz spoke about last week wanting us to arise so I've been thinking about this a lot and gone through the process myself and what I want to talk to you about briefly is becoming a new wineskin and I know you may be thinking what is she talking about being a new wineskin what has that got to do with arising in this season and leaning into God with for his strength and I'm just wanting to read a verse and unpack it a little bit so you can get the gist of where I'm coming from so it's in Matthew 9 verse 16 and it says no one puts a piece of new cloth on an old garment for the patch pulls away from the garment and the tear is made worse nor do they put new wine into old wineskins or else the wineskins break and the wine is spilt and the wineskins are ruined but they put new wine into new wineskins and both are preserved so when we talk about um, cutting a piece of new clothing to repair an old piece of clothing. Um, when you do that, the stitching doesn't last long and it starts to fall apart. But really, it'd be like, you know, getting a brand new shirt, getting a Nike shirt or an Adidas shirt and, get, you know, getting your new Nike shirt and taking out the tick and placing on your old piece of clothing. No one really does that, do they? Like, oh, I'm going to get that tick and put it on my old piece of clothing that's holy and, you know, well worn out. No, we put on the new piece of clothing. We put our new threads on and we, we wear it around. And your old shirt gets left on the bottom of the drawer or it becomes a cloth and um, we throw it out because it's, it's, it's um, done all that it, it can do for you in that season. And I just think about the, the new wineskin and we think about the new wineskin as being ourselves and that the wine is the blessings that God is wanting to pour into our lives. And sometimes we could be praying for a situation, praying for a job, praying for a partner even, but it doesn't happen when we want it to. And then we try and make things happen in our own strength. We go before God and, you know, God, you're taking too long. I really want this relationship. And, you know, you, you do it in your strength. Then you think that you're getting involved with Mr. Right, but, you know, it, it turns out to be Mr. Wrong and you get into a lot of mess from doing that. and um, But Jesus has the right person for us at the right time. And he has the right job at the right time. And you know, he pours that blessing into our life at the right time. When we become a new wineskin, we become ready to hold that blessing that God is wanting to pour into us by changing our circumstances, by leaning and learning from God. And this time of transition can become of becoming a new wineskin from an old wineskin can be, be quite painful. As we are learning new things, we are stepping into something new. We are rising and, and sometimes the process can be a bit pressured. Because as we rise, we need to let go of some of the old stuff. To make room for the new stuff, we need to let go some of that and leave it behind. And sometimes it could be a job that we've been in for years, and, and but maybe it's a relationship that has come to an end. And it's not that you, you don't like that person anymore, it's just that you're going in different directions, and that's okay. And maybe it's your thinking, old patterns of thinking, that God is wanting to bring you into a, a new space and a, and a new order. And it could be, you know, self-doubt needs to drop off our lives. And it may be the way that we think about certain situations. In, we may be thinking about some things sometimes unhealthily in the past. And God is wanting to look at a situation 
with clear eyes and a pure heart. And I love this picture of becoming a new wineskin. I don't really love becoming a new wineskin because that process hurts a little bit. But, you know, I always thought that this verse meant that when you become a new wineskin, it, it's when you become a Christian. And, and that's that's true also. Um, but, uh, you know, when we come into different seasons, we come into different um, seasons of transition of our lives. And we need to let go of the old so God can do something new in us. Like the old shirt, we need to make a decision to let it go so we can have so much more and that we are equipped for the season ahead of us to run in everything that God has for us. Maybe you are the person who would patch that old shirt up because it was comfy and because you know what it could handle. You know what it's been through and, and you've been through a lot with that old shirt. But it's come to the point where you have patched it up so many times that it's fallen apart and it can't handle it anymore. And I feel that God is saying in this season that you need to put on the new shirt and it might take a little time for you to get used to the new shirt might take some time to focus on it, to just stretch it and to um, make it feel the way that it should feel. But it will support you through this next leg of the race and for this next season. So let go of what it looked like before and embrace what it looks like now. There will be pressure, but just arise and keep moving forward and trust in Jesus like you have never trusted him before and he will grow you this season in freedom and in purpose and in victory. And I just wanted to share a little snippet of a post that I saw from a guy called Joseph Fuller Running. And it says, from faith to faith, from strength to strength, from glory to glory. These words in the Bible reflect the endless possibility for elevation, transformation, for glorification and empowerment that we have as the people of God. That is endless possibility of more and more in God. So thanks guys for listening. I hope this encourages you and strengthens you to become all that you can be in Him. Thank you so much for joining us for church tonight. We're always so excited when you tune in. And our prayer is that God will do an incredible work, building faith, building hope, building vision, and just revealing himself to you in a way you've never known before. So I pray that today's been an encouragement, but I also know God's not wanting us to just lean in once, but just to go the journey with him. So my prayer is that as you journey in faith, you know, something begins to unfold. That's an incredible blessing in your life and um before i just speak a little of what god's put on my heart i just want to give a massive shout out to all the people in our church in condoblin yesterday who turned up at our working bee in our building and packed cleaned put things away demolished you know parts of our building to build something new cleared out our storeroom just working together to create a beautiful space for us as we begin to have face-to-face -face services sometime hopefully in the next few weeks that's beautiful and fresh and just really welcoming so huge thank you to everyone that pitched in but a massive massive shout out to Ian, Bruce and Nathan those guys have been working well over 12 months to just create such a beautiful space a sense of home and uh, they work super, super hard. And I know even after we all left the working bee yesterday, you know, they were there and they were chipping away at different things. And just they, they are such a blessing. So we love you guys and we really pray that, you know, in the same way that you've given out, God will just absolutely pour out blessing after blessing over you guys are absolute champions. So send them some love, everyone. And thank you, Bruce, Ian and Nathan. You know, last week I spoke out of Isaiah 61, 60 verse 1. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of God is risen on you. Such a cool verse, and this sense that at the beginning of a brand new season, God wants us to take a new stance, to rise up. 
God wants us to not come under the power of our circumstances, but walk in the power of faith. Not come under the power of the day or let the day own us, but own the day and lead our lives. This sense that as we rise, God's light is released over us, but it's also reflected through us in a way that really transforms our communities. And, um, you know, I think for me, part of a rising, it's not so much about stepping into the new or walking in the new. To me, it speaks of God doing something in us that causes us to become new. And that's really what Tracy was referencing when she talked about new wineskin or new garment. This sense that as we rise up at the beginning of a new season, God wants to come in and do an incredible work in our hearts, in our thinking, in our perspectives, just bringing us into newness, but actually making us new in him. And that sense of becoming new is possible because of Jesus. It's possible in God. You know, there's this verse in Ezekiel 36, 26. It says, I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit in you. I will remove your heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh. Such an incredible promise that as we connect to Jesus, our hearts become new, but they also become soft, open, and able to receive everything God has got for us. In 2 Corinthians 5.17, anyone who belongs to Christ has become a new person. The old has gone, the new life has begun. That is an amazing verse. You know, we have one life to live. Can't flick a switch and become a different person. I'm me and I'm going to be me the whole breadth of my life. But the promise in that word says that as I connect to Jesus, I connect into something so incredibly full of life and hope that something transforms inside of me, in my heart, that effectively causes me to become new and for my life to become new in Jesus the power of the past being broken being left behind and me able to rise up with new hope new joy just new faith new perspective a sense of forgiveness and sense of being clean and whole such an incredible promise I know God is speaking over each of us God as we connect to him the old is gone new life has begun. So new, what does it mean to be new? Bible talks about new being fresh and young. But the Bible also uses three words lots of times to describe this sense of God connecting with our lives in a way that makes us new, that changes and transforms us. And the words that the Bible uses are rebuild, restore, and repair. So to be new, rebuilt, restored, and repaired. Now, at the beginning of this year, brand new year, everyone makes, you know, New Year's resolutions. And at the beginning of this year, I remember grabbing my Bible, grabbing a book I just bought, and reading these words written by a friend of mine. She's an author and a poet. Her name is Tess Ginnery. And she, she wrote a book called Moonflower Monologues. And she wrote some incredible words about new, just very simple, but to me, Just absolutely beautiful. New season, new heart. New sun, new start. New wine, new ground. New song, new sound. So beautiful. You know, a new season needs a new heart. A new sun, it marks a brand new start. Beginning of a new season, God causes new wine to come out of our lives and he establishes new ground for his purpose to be built in us and through us. The other thing about new, coming into a new season and God does a work in our heart that causes our heart to become new, there's a new sound, there's a new song that begins to rise out of our lives. And I know that personally, you know, when my heart starts to lay a hold of something in God I hadn't known before, I don't know, I just start to sing and I start talking about the thing that God's doing in me and I start talking about the future and 
I'm telling you, you know that you're leaning into the new when your focus is on what's about to happen rather than the power of the past. And I, I love that, that sense that God breaks something old so we can actually lay a hold at a real heart level of what is to come in him. You know, when we talk about God giving us new hearts, new thinking, new songs about new sound coming out of our lives, we are talking about something that is happening in us because of Jesus. We're talking about the power of the past being broken forever. We're talking about God's grace and his mercy being poured out over our lives in a way that breaks us out into what is new. And I remember the first time I had a sense of God's newness in me. It was also the first time I felt forgiveness. It was the first time in my life I can honestly say I experienced hope. It was the first time in my life I opened my heart to Jesus in prayer. It was when I asked him to take charge. It was when I asked him to heal me. It was when I asked him to come into my heart. It was also the first time I realized that Jesus died for me and wanted me to accept his gift of new life, of life and hope, and of relationship with him. And I believe that God is speaking that over you. Life, hope, calling you into relationship with him. When I first experienced the new things that God had for me, I accessed all of that by reaching out to Jesus, by opening my heart and by praying. And I remember that time feeling like God, his presence was right there in my room with me. It was all about what he wanted to do in my heart and in my life. And I believe that God is with you right now. He's all about what he wants to do in your heart and your life. And just like me, you access it by opening your heart in prayer and asking Jesus to take charge, accepting what he has done. So what I want to do to finish is just create some space for you to do what I did when I was 16, that day I experienced hope for the first time. Pray. Receiving Jesus into my life by faith and allow, allowing heaven to link with earth in my world. So I want to pray. Jesus, I thank you for everything you have done for me. I thank you for your gift of new life. I accept and receive that by faith. I ask you to take charge of my life. I thank you that you have broken the power of the past. And as I just walk in you and find myself in you in a way I've never known before, I thank you that the old is gone and the new has come. And God, I want you to make my heart new. I ask you to make my heart new. I ask you to do an incredible work in me and help me to walk into everything that you have planned. I thank you for your forgiveness. I thank you for your goodness. And I thank you for your grace. And God, I commit myself to you. Pray that you will help me to walk this new life in you. I put my trust in you. In Jesus' name, amen. Such a powerful, life-changing prayer. And I know that God isn't just wanting you to just pray that prayer and move on. He's wanting, like I'd mentioned at the beginning of this little message, to cause those new things, the goodness of God, to really soak into your life and become a part of you. And so I really encourage you just to keep reaching out to God. Keep praying. If you don't have a Bible and you would like one, we would love to gift you a Bible. So reach out. We would love to give you one. But we'd also really love to encourage you in your walk in faith. So let us know if you've prayed that prayer or you would like some support just growing in God. Um, and I'm excited for what God's going to do as you start to step into everything he has for you. I just want to say one last thing. It's actually about our communities rather than us as individuals. I, I think it's amazing 
that God wants to come into our hearts on a one-on-one -on -one level. He wants to do something deeply personal. But I know that as God does something in us, he also wants to do something through us. The promise of newness is not just for us as individuals. But I know that God wants to do something new over whole communities. He wants to do something new in Kondoblin. He wants to do something new in Wagga Wagga. And I'll read you this verse from Isaiah 58 verse 12. Your people will rebuild the ancient ruins. You will raise up and restore the age-old foundations of buildings that have been laid waste. You will be called the repairer of the breach, restorer of streets to dwell in. Love this sense that as God does something new in us, he wants to then do something new through us. And he causes us to become part of a company of people who rebuild, repair, restore. And that's his promise over Condoblin and Wagga, over Western New South Wales, over our nation, rebuild, repair, restore. I really want to finish today not just expressing hope for you as an individual or for me, but I want to declare the hope of God over our whole community because I know that God's hand is on us. And I know that God wants to do something new in our elders, in our young people, in our families. He wants to do something new for the vulnerable amongst us. He just wants to do something new in our community. And so my prayer, as we step through whatever term three and beyond looks like, heaven links with earth in our communities and the goodness of God is built. I know our arising is part of that. As we just continue to walk in faith, there is something of a light of God that shines. Actually, it's going to release hope and life for others around us. So I encourage you to be praying just for our communities and I encourage you just to keep doing the journey in God. I know the future is so, so bright in Him. I pray you have an awesome week and uh, don't forget, reach out if you would like some support in your journey in God like a Bible. If you need prayer, let us know. We would love to support you and uh, excited to see you in church or online in church um, Sunday next week and uh, stay tuned for more announcements through our Facebook page. God bless you and have an awesome week. For God so loved the world Come on That he gave his own So